The um, gentleman from Alexandria, Mr. Moran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, speak to the bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, the gentle lady from Fairfax has laid it out very well, so I won't uh, belabor the point. But I did hear from two of my colleagues from Prince William who spoke with respect to their, uh, their sympathy or their empathy for those who are suffering in our economy right now, and I, I believe that is a sincere uh, uh, empathy. But I do suggest to them, as we look at this bill and what it will mean to the future of Virginia, that, in fact, this is an economic bill. This will indeed provide for our economic future. You invest a billion dollars in our transportation system, it generates 35,000 jobs. 35,000 jobs for Virginians. Now, this morning I had the opportunity to attend the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority press conference and listened intently. There was a, the mayor of Petersburg was there, a gentleman from Goochland and several Northern Virginia officials besieging us to act and act responsibly and act now. This bill represents a responsible, prudent response to our transportation crisis in Virginia. Now, the two gentlemen from Prince William spoke, Delegates Marshall and Lingenfelter, and during that press conference, I want to bring, them, bring to their attention, a gentleman approached me and handed me his business card and said he owns a bridge company in Manassas. He says, you know, over the, just the last couple of months, I've had to lay off over 50 employees, and he handed me this sheet which reflects their zip codes. 20109, he's nailed off 17 employees in Manassas, Bristow, three in Gainesville, and then it stretches out to Warrington, Dumfries, Springfield, Woodbridge, Front Royal, Stephen City, Culpeper, Remington, Reva, Loretta. This is just one company, Williams Bridge Company, that has laid off employees. I'd ask you to consider those individuals as we vote on this bill. This is an investment we must continue to invest in our infrastructure, whether it be human capital at our colleges and universities, which I give great deal of credit in a bipartisan way, we recognize the importance of investing in our human capital for our future. This is the physical infrastructure. This is the roads, the rail, the transit that is so vitally necessary for the economic engine of Virginia to continue to move. Consider those jobs. Now, those Virginians who are suffering at the gas stations every day, we recognize their needs. We said we're not, when gas prices are over $4 a gallon, this is no time to raise the price of gasoline on those hardworking Virginians. High, high price of food. You know, this is the time to actually reduce the tax on food. We're reducing it from two and a half cents to two cents. I think that is a responsible, prudent, action and prudent response to the high cost of food and gas prices today. At the same time, we must make investments in our economic future, whether it be in Hampton Roads and the port and the millions of containers that are now being generated through the wonderful activity going on in the port or in Northern Virginia. This bill represents a sufficient, sustainable, and a statewide solution to our transportation woes, I thank you for allowing a vote in a debate to occur today on what I view as a real solution to our transportation crisis. Let's vote yes and do what our citizens have asked us to do and continue to make the appropriate, smart investments in Virginia's future. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.